Hello everyone and welcome back to another Art of Conquest video. Like usual, this is your boy Legend Ronnie, and I'm trying my best to bring you as much content as I can in Art of Conquest. But there isn't much going on, so there isn't much I can do about. As a request, I had this human perspective video that I made about the setup, the heroes and everything. So I had a request about the leech. Well, right now I'm dwarf, so I'm doing the dwarf one. And next one, next time I'm going to be leech, I will do the leech one. <clears throat> so if you do find this video interesting, please drop a like. If it's your first time watching me, you can consider subscribing. I am doing Art of Conquest and I will do Art of Conquest, but I need to have content. If I don't have content, there is nothing I can create. So let me get into the game and start with the heroes. The next video about Art of Conquest that you might expect from me might be on this time, 4 days and 10 hours. Well, it might be too late for me, like too early in the morning, but that's when I'm probably going to record it, the Imperium, and, and that's the reason why I'm also dwarf right now. <clears throat> so let me go into the heroes. And I'm going to show you all the heroes, then I'm going to show you the setups that I use as Darf. So basically, Rufio, these are his items and these are his abilities. All I care about Rufio is the strong physics to bring me as much stamina as possible into the battle. I might even consider him leveling him up to 40 just to bring me more stamina. This is Avril. The Polar Prodigy. She is pretty dope. I like her a lot. It's just that in PvP she doesn't do enough damage. So unfortunately these are her items. I aim for her to bring us more stats as possible into the battle. For PvE, although I have this set, you can see for yourself is 201 magic. That is pretty insane and she's still level 45 if i get her to level 50 that's going to be 210 magic that is crazy she might be even do some serious damage if i max her out it's just it's not in the plan right now so this are, is the set for pvp right, right now one. and those were the abilities which i showed you valari as you can see she's level 38 i haven't invested m much in her my aim for Valari is to bring again more stats into the battle for PvP and these are her abilities. I try to focus as much as I can on the passive ones, which is Lotus Fire, Cracking Flame and a bit of Burning. Next one is Avalon. Since I am on my match setup, all I care about Avalon is his Warhorn. You can see that I have summoned Archer, so I can have an ability, I can summon some units with him, they will probably do a bit of damage. That's my main focus about Avalon, just the Warhorn. You can see his maxed out is 140% attack speed, so basically the tanks, they don't get controlled by the Cleo Hole, so they will do tremendous amount of damage during this time. And these are his items. Although I have this item, this only works with humanoids, but I'm not entirely sure that I have anything better to put, so I have used this item, Heaven's Edge. Elena. What do you need to know about Elena? Is that magic resistance. This is something that you need to max out when it comes to magic resistance. The second thing. I have 8 points in here, so she will go into summon Templars, which do not lose morale, even if they are not uh, highly buffed. But there are some troops there in the front, they will not lose morale, They'll, they will tank damage, so it's all good. And these are her items. Next one. This is Vega. Unfortunately, this is not the setup that I usually keep on Vega for PvP as Darth perspective. I just forgot to change her. This is usually her first set when, I, when I'm when i as human or this is the set that I use even when I'm Leech. Because as you can see, this is the maximum boost I can give to her favor of the Sun God. 
which is her heal ability. So this is what I care about when I'm Darth is pretty much nothing about Vega. Because I have match and tanks, heal doesn't work, saving li lives doesn't work, so there's nothing good I can actually use from Vega when I'm Darth. Maybe except mana barrier, but even maxed out, I have tried it, it's very very weak, the damage is being is a matter of second, one or two seconds and then the barrier is down, so it's not really really that great. So basically, when I am Darth, I usually keep my Vega something like this. Thank you for your generosity. I try to bring as many stats as possible into the into the battle. Thank you for your generosity. So this is how my Vega basically looks as Darth perspective when I PvP. This is my Virion and these are his abilities. Obviously I started as human so I invested a lot in Virion, that's why he has a lot of ability, that's why Vega has a lot of ability, Elena and Avalon. But now I'm, I'm, this is from Darth perspective, it's not necessary that you need to max this out. You need to focus on your Darth heroes first uh, before you focus on, on the other ones. The reason I have Crusader Shield is because uh, Summon Swordsman might not be that helpful uh, for me at the moment. Although, considering that uh, I'm gonna reset him right now. Well, you see this is something that I just noticed right now, which is pretty pretty cool, that I did notice. So as a perspective, considering the amount of abilities that, that I have, uh, Virion is actually much better this way, because I use match and tanks, summon swordsman, and I can put one point in swordsman mastery. Plus the command from Virion, they might get a slightly boost. But the Swordsman at this point is gonna summon Legionnaire, which do not lose morale, so it's not bad at all. Even if they're not gonna do that much damage, that just troops in there to tank the damage. These are his items, I want him to last as much as possible. Gun, the Elder Druid. These are his items, abilities, Twisted Horns, Earthquake, this is what I care about from Gun. Then is Theodrine, as I'm 50-50 about Theodrine, when I can I, I try to take it out because she's very weak in defense, she, she dies and just gives the enemy moral boost. So this is what I care about, Aura, Aura of Retribution, these are her items, I try to complete the set but still need the chest piece. Gazul. Gazul has two new pieces of equipment from the new void. This is one of them. Hero bonus ability, cooldown reduced by one second. The effect does not stack. And these are his abilities. Obviously, since I have match and tanks, fearsome aura maxed, solar scourge maxed. Because I want my enemies to run away in fear as soon as possible possible this is my Cleo these are her abilities basically what you need to focus on is Tom of creation and Tom of wisdom not necessary max out Tom of wisdom and I had extra points so this is why I have arcane codex when I try to PVE or do anything else this is uh, her set as you can see it's a lot more magic but since I'm interested in stats right now this is her set Vraxius can see level 29, there isn't much to say about Vraxius, I don't really use him in PvP since there are so many uh, heroes right now. These are his abilities. So there isn't much to talk about Vraxius, he's just a sack of stats to bring into the battlefield. Rose! Why does Rose has this item? I have no freaking idea. It's a very cool item, but I think this might suit better. Or not. Um, so this is Rose and these are her abilities. 
Mother of Spiders, Venom Explosion, Toxic Touch and Speed Hatchling. Basically it's a mix mixture of boosting up those spiderlings as much as possible so she can summon as more spiders as possible while in the same time she will do some damage and reduce the attack speed of movement speed of enemies so that is pretty pretty cool that's how i set up my rose as dark perspective these are her items the only reason i think she has this is because it's flawless no other reason plus i think magic does give her some some damage bonus exactly I could give her actually a, a magic item hmm. I'll think about it now greens this is one of the dark heroes if you don't know already these are his abilities in time with tanks and match this is how I keep my greens obviously if if you want to use Grims for various for different uh, occasions this is all messed up unfortunately <laughs> let me fix it up <laughs> real quickly and uh, I think he had one of these isn't it yeah he did so if you have to if you want to use Grims for uh, different occasions like for, for example PvE or Siege you have to change his abilities and I think it's the second spec yeah so this is the second spec that you might want to use for PvE or Siege and these are the items but since I care about PvP in Colosseum I'm using this and this particular set of items give me more, of more command to boost my tanks as much as possible Gafga now you might be wondering why Gefga has this item is is only for this particular five command that he can bring not because he can summon or anything because obviously this doesn't have not even half a star but for particular reason for that uh, five command his abilities repairman temporary repair iron shield iron shield that sounds so cool and a hundred command so he is pretty pretty dope he's boosting my match as much as possible while healing them in the same time if I'm going to use blasters I have Nora with 98 command what the hell it's supposed to be a hundred well it's 98 I'm not having blasters I'm not really fan of blasters because they lose morale blasters are only good for PvE for example when is the speed rush events I already have a video about the 10 second uh, a video how to do the 10 second event and they are also good for siege the blasters they are awesome when it comes to siege but nothing else might be very good into the void up to a certain a certain stage but i'm in favor of match and tanks for for pvp and that's why i am like that jack this is again darth perspective and these are his abilities maxed out match expert that's what you need then double charge expanded capacity spray and pray not so much in spray and pray because he doesn't have only 92 might uh, because of these items so his damage is not really really that great but he still does a significant amount of damage and that two points in spray and sp uh, spray and pray it does help him out so this is a dark perspective jack mako very very powerful and very very good uh, damaging hero i would really really want to work on him to be honest but i don't get any flawless i'm crafting as many of his items to try to increase his uh, his might i'm unlucky with the blorton rapiers as well and same with this one I would like to have him at least 150 might and these are his abilities crack shot maxed eagle eye and killer instinct he is a damaging machine Eep, master Eep, elemental master this is what you need to care about master Eep if you're if you're dark if the tail is the tailwind 
to slow down the enemy archers if any from one side to reduce their damage by 60% that's what I use Ip for as Darth the other option you can use Ip if, if you really really want to is this particular spec which is almost maxed out cyclone but max out gust so you'll definitely definitely going to do some serious stunning which you can see it's 18 seconds that's quite a lot so you can do some serious serious stunning on the enemy if you use this particular setup and I might try it. I'm gonna keep it like this. Denji, one of my favorite. If you want to ask me, I really, really like Denji. 163 might. He's level 50, 104 stamina. You can see that I'm trying to boost his might as much as possible. For some reason, he doesn't do that much damage, but I I don't know, I just like him with a lot of, of might, because it comes in handy with this one, which grants him another 45 might. And then he has these two abilities, Spin Strike and Stunning Blow, which I pretty pretty like him, I like him like this anyway. Then I have Bane, which is a pure tank, literally, literally very very tanky hero when it comes to physical damage all you need to care about him is his barbaric blessing this one you need to max out and then provoke viking chist chieftain uh, corner beast these are you no know, maybe one point in spinning axe but that's about it you don't really need to invest that much in bane belrog you can see that my belrog is level 50 and that's because it's for this ability when Belrog is on the battlefield enemy units attack 9.5% slower and deal 9.5% less damage so that is very very nice does not affect massive or large units so this is only for the normal units basically you could say maybe human units but the least troops they are small as well or normal units or something like that uh, the warlocks and the skeletons so it might affect them as well so Belrog is a very very nice hero this is the first ability that you should focus on on him then is this one which is going to reduce the damage that he takes as less health as he has and then he's going to reincarnate if the totem spirit energy is full I put one point in Totemic Curse and uh, one point in Shockwave because once he gets that, that bar full he's going to start just hitting with Shockwaves, Shockwaves and then Revenant is a stun so it's another very nice skill that I put two points but I don't have more abilities to spend on him. I would not really really advise Primal Fury, uh, the reason is because he's not really uh, damaging commander and then if you do a lot of abilities you're just going to fill up your bar this is why many many com uh, heroes that you've seen on me or you've seen I, they don't really have like all their skills or their abilities and that is the main purpose why is because you're just going to fill up that bar and it's gonna be much much harder for you to, to use skills or use the important skills and then I have Fenris. This is the way I have Fenris. I, if others have different opinions, that's their own choice. I use Fenris just for the wolves. I don't plan to use Harris on or Fenris on like, to use his full moon so he can go himself in the back and kill stuff. Um, I prefer to use other abilities into the battle rather than using Fenris full moon so I prefer to try to max out as much as possible the wolves themselves which is basically the tick hide the blotter so they can regenerate as more health as possible then obviously attack speed they attack faster they regenerate faster they get reduced damage so the wolves can become immortals sort of speaking 
All right, so enough about the commanders. Let's go into a battle and just show you the two setups. Since I'm only using match and tanks setup, there is only two setups that you can make. And this would be the first one that you can see over here. Even the placement of uh, of the heroes, it matters. Maybe I can put Bane in the front of Belrog. Yeah, that that would uh, would look much better. But I think, hold on, hold hold on. I think I didn't show the items on the last few heroes. I was just showing their their abilities. These are the items of Fenris. So obviously I'm focusing uh, to increase his might because it does affect the wolves. This is Belrog. And you, you've seen Bane. So these are the items on two commanders that I missed. And now I'm gonna, this is the setup. And I'm going to show the other setup. So this is only for PvP. Because the troops that I have right now, they are not really good for anything else. Even the placement of the troops, you can see that the gap in the middle is closed. Uh, there is six tanks, so this is a six tank setup. You can do a five tank uh, setup if you wish. You can take out a tank, you can put rows and then you have uh, room for dra your dragon. And if you want to deploy your dragon, this is how I usually deploy my dragon. I just take out uh, another two, com uh, two heroes. Make it quick. And I just move these guys over here. You might be wondering why, why I'm keeping uh, me up when the Rufio and taking out uh, Avril. That's because Rufio has an ability that can bring more stamina than Avril. Avril has an ability that can bring me magic. And I'm really not interested in uh, increasing my magic into the battle. So now you can deploy your dragon. And if you do want to, to put more heroes, you can simply just take out a tank. You can put rows in there and then you can put another hero over here. It looks pretty odd to have all these uh, four empty spaces there is another way you, you can uh, you can put more heroes but that requires a bit more workout you need to put the, the match something like this and then not rows in the front you put tanking heroes in the front if I'm correct well you can you can work that one out if you really want to, um, but I don't highly advise it. I I would advise it like this. Keep her out and put Rose in there. If you do not want to use the dragon, as I mentioned, you take it out, you put two, two more heroes, and that would be the end of it. If you want to use all the heroes to make sure 100% that you win in stats, you might need to take out too many tanks, and uh, you're definitely going to lack a lot of damage. So it's entirely up to you or your choice, but this is how I, I plan to go. If, if I don't win in stats, I don't win in stats, and that's it. So this is my Darf perspective video. I hope you find this helpful. Until next time, this is Legend Ronnie and peace out.